please help me in uh, welcoming and honoring Sandy. Gonna be reading this. Good evening. Thank you. I'm not very comfortable at events, but hopefully I'll be able to make it through speaking to you tonight so that I may fully honor resources and those of you who thought enough of my efforts in tandem with Dina Jensen's that our names were added to the list of selectees this year with honorable people such as Ellie Kinley, Bob Agarter, and the late Jeremy Freeman. I'm grateful for resources' continued efforts to educate people for its invaluable advocacy efforts and for its willingness to bring forth legal action when needed all in its endeavor to protect our environment. It was 2011 when I first learned that SSA Marine proposed to site a 48 million ton per year coal terminal, GPT, at Cherry Point. Dina and I joined a group called Save Birch Bay, comprised of about 20 very dedicated people who felt it important to educate themselves and others about GPT. At that same time, I also started learning more about the Lummi Nation who stood and still stand steadfastly against a proposed coal terminal and other unrefined fossil fuel export development at Cherry Point. Lummi Nation maintains a sacred obligation to protect Huachiaquin, Cherry Point, based on the cultural and spiritual significance of that area. Despite Lummi Nation's multiple expressions of their position that the impacts associated with GPT on their treaty rights could not be mitigated, SSA did not listen, and they forged ahead anyway. And disturbingly, some of our elected officials facilitated SSA Marine's venture. I remember reading a Herald article several years ago reporting that Lummi Nation had asserted its fishing rights in order to stop the coal terminal from being built. At that time, a friend of mine offered another perspective. She said, knowing there was a treaty against it, a coal terminal insisted on stomping in the middle of treaty protected fishing grounds. So the coal terminal had to be reminded what it already knew, that it would be breaking the law, the supreme law of the land. It isn't that the Lummi tried to stop a terminal, it's that a terminal tried to stop them. I thought that story needed as much exposure as possible, so that was why I started and kept writing about it. And when I say I, I really should say Dina and I, because she's instrumental in so many ways in getting that story told and out to people. Our work is true collaboration. Ultimately, Lummi Nation was successful in defeating GPT, which would have brought devastating impacts to our community had it been built. I'm grateful to Lummi Nation for putting their treaty rights on the line to protect Huchiakin, because doing so protected all of us. Many people in our community and groups like Resources also fought hard against the coal terminal and stood in solidarity with Lummi Nation, for which I'm so thankful. Lastly, advocates for numerous fossil fuel industry companies with interest in Cherry Point, advocates for some agricultural industry enterprises, along with some conservative groups, are demonizing resources and are urging people to boycott its restore. They're doing that because of resources' effectiveness in protecting environmental and human health from unfettered fossil fuel development, and because of the effectiveness of its advocacy efforts to strengthen needed agricultural regulations. So it's critical that we support resources in any way we can and as much as we can because there are powerful forces that want to run their organization out of existence. We need to stay strong. We need to stay strong, stay united, and stay organized so we can keep fighting, our fighting for our environment and for a healthy planet. Thank you very much. Thank you.